Hey, what's up guys? Peter here, Roland Heights. Um, I'm doing a follow-up video on this 2004 Honda Pilot V6. And uh, I'll put a link in the description below on how I cleared the codes and how I kept it from coming back. I gave it a lot of time so that I can make sure that it's completely gone. We just had this car smogged and it passed. So that you know for sure the check engine light is gone. The stored codes are gone. And uh, if you look at the description below, I, I'm going to put a video. I'm going to link the video of how I cleaned the, the EGR ports. From there, I went ahead and uh, cleared the codes and it was gone. But then about six months later, it came back. And uh, from there, I changed the EGR valve. Okay, which is right there underneath this cover. It's going to be right under there. And then uh, about some time again later, about three months later, it came back on. And then what I did was that I changed the PCV valve, which is right there, right in front of my index finger. It's about a $20 part. All I can say to you guys and advise you guys is to always use the OEM parts. And uh, so you never have a problem with... Uh, uh, aftermarket parts that don't work well with the um, OEM parts so I'm gonna go ahead and check the codes on this so I can show you guys that it has passed and again like I was saying the smog is on this car is due next month and we just had it smogged and it passed all the codes are gone it used to have um, P0300 P0301 all the way to 306 basically it's a random misfire anytime you have a random misfire that's not indicated in a specific valve it usually means that there's some kind of combustion issue somewhere along the emission center, emission control. So again, I like to start with the cheapest part possible. So we went ahead and did a tune-up, which is like spark plugs. Um, the timing belt was already due, so we did the timing belt. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the videos for that. But I do have the video of the EGR port. That did clean and clear a lot of the codes I mean all the codes at one point but then again it returned and um, we also did a computer reset on the car which you have to put it on ignition for two seconds but you have to take off the battery first and I'm sure you guys could find that on eBay I didn't I mean on eBay I'm sorry on YouTube there's videos in that too and I didn't record that when I did that but basically uh, a quick uh, snapshot of it is that you unplug the battery make sure that it's completely drained so leave it unplugged for a couple minutes you plug it back in put the ignition on for about two seconds before you start the car when you start the car you rev it to three three thousand rpm consistently for five sec for five minutes and then when that happens you turn off the car or you could measure the temperature of the radiator fluid, which I didn't do. So five minutes at 3,000 RPMs, and that should reset your computer and uh, put it back to its um, original state. Um, again, uh, those are the things that we did here. I, I did clean the throttle body as well of the car. And the car runs really good now with no check engine light. And I'm going to show you guys that it has no stored codes. Okay, as you can see, I have it plugged in. This is a CP9135 OBD2 scanner. Okay, I have it plugged in. I'm going to have it read codes, see if there's any stored codes. Over here, there's no check engine light. You guys see there's no check engine light. So that shows you there's no check engine light, but sometimes there's a stored code. So we're going to make sure that there's no stored code on this and go from there. Okay, it's reading data. Pass no codes returned okay all right now for the monitors the the little monitors like the catalytic converter and all that we're gonna see if they're ready okay misfire is ready fuel system is ready that's ready um, comprehension yeah that's the computer catalyst is ready that's a catalytic converter heated cat is not applicable the evaporative system, this is a EGR, so it's not, it, it doesn't run an evaporative system, so that doesn't apply. Um, 
sec air that's not a, applicable ac refrigerant not, not applicable o2 sensor is ready okay these are parts of the smog so that's ready um ho2 sensor is ready egr system is ready that right there those are the important ones so you can smog your car after you reset the computer um if you don't have one of these scanners you could actually take it to an auto zone and they'll lend you one um or you could drive the car for at least 50 miles and it should be ready but that shows you right there that everything that i did on the car has worked um again we i we did a tune-up uh we cleaned the throttle body changed out the spark plugs we cleaned or it replaced the air filter um i replaced the egr valve okay i cleaned the idle air control valve i replaced the pcv valve that's the latest one and the car has been running really good and we've driven over 300 miles on it so if the check engine light will reappear it would have had an opportunity plenty of opportunity to do so already um, the timing belt has been replaced so but i wouldn't recommend that unless unless your car is already due for it um here in california i can't speak for other states here in california um every vehicle that's uh 2001 or i believe 2000 and newer they don't put it in the dyno anymore they just plug it in to the computer right here like how i have it here and from there if there's any codes or if it returns with no codes then your car passes well there you go uh this car passed smog that was the issue that i was having and everybody else is having with these honda pilots um and some honda v6 accords that have the same engine as his and also an acura mdx i believe these all have the same motors around the 03 to 06 i believe don't quote me on that but i'm speaking for this 04 honda pilot v6 um keep in mind um when we were having a check engine problem the vvti or vtm light a green light was also turning on in the dash that was now gone this car has approximately 285,000 miles yes 285,085 miles right there okay so these cars last forever but you do have to maintain it keep in mind a lot of people especially the dealership they will or might recommend that you do a valve adjustment this car has not i repeat has not had a single valve adjustment done to it and we have fixed the problem by simply doing the necessary things to put it back up to par okay um keep in mind also we went from the cheapest to the most expensive and the most expensive right now has been the timing belt replacement and and the most time consuming but remember that is not an emission part your emission parts to pass smog would be your spark plugs your egr system your egr uh egr valve your pcv valve your egr ports your idle air control valve um your tip sensor all those those are the ones that play a part in the emission controls and i'm telling you what we've done so that we can get the car to pass smog without cheating it we did not cheat the smog on this car this is the original catalytic converter on this car at 285,000 miles it still has the original catalytic converter original upflow and downstream o2 sensor uh the only ones that we've replaced since this car was bought brand new was uh the idle air control valve and that was because the car would not uh stay on we've replaced the egr valve the pcv valve has been replaced once that's the recent one and i think i think that's what actually fixed the problem that we were having with these computerized vehicles um based on the passing criteria here in the state of california as long as there's no check engine light and your your monitors are clean i, I mean ready like what i showed you guys your car is going to pass smog if there's no if there's no uh check engine light and so that's what we did we reset the computer but yes we had to drive it because the monitors when you reset the computer the monitors will not be ready you will need to drive the car around so that it'll be ready for you um because they will not pass you and this this was a star station that we brought it to it was a smog only station and so yeah there you go guys you could pass your honda pilot or your acura mdx or your honda accords without having to spend twelve to fifteen hundred dollars 
to do a valve adjustment. Um, these engines will last forever as long as you maintain your oil. We've been using uh, Mobile One synthetic oil in this car, although it's not, you know, uh, recommended. We just used it ever since it was brand new. Again, it has 285,085 miles so far. Everything's original. AC is still original. Engine is original. Transmission is original. Oh yeah, and the most recent part that that actually gave out on the car that we had to replace was the rear main seal. Um, so yeah, that was it, you guys. And so again, um, I'm I'm making this video as a follow up and. You know, so that people don't have to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to get their car to be par with emissions in the state of California. Um, yeah, again, that's all we did. We did the basic maintenance and, you know, we did things right. We did not cheat the system and we passed it. And so, you know, I hope this video helps you guys. This is a family channel, so if you would like more future videos, I do some DIYs. My daughters do toy reviews. Sometimes, occasion, we do family vlogs. But uh, if you guys like this video, if it helped you in any way, if you have questions, please comment down below. Please click like and subscribe uh, for more updated videos. But here you guys go. Your Honda Pilot will pass smog. And yes, you do not need a valve adjustment in most cases. All right, guys, you guys have a blessed day. Have a good day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.